in your face all over the place. We're online 24-7, 24-7. You're listening to the hottest internet station. From beautiful Celine in southeastern Michigan. Around the world at sunskymysteries.com. This is the 2009 Top 10 Webcam in the World winner. This is S-E-T-V. Well, good evening, everybody. Or you might not be watching this in the evening. How you guys doing? My name is Belzam. And I'm sure you've noticed by now, just a few seconds into the show, we are, in fact, now in high definition what we're trying to do is we are trying to get everything all set so that we can resume the live broadcasts here probably in about a week or so the uh, next trick that we have to do is get the phone system working so that we can have guests on the show once again the show will be streamed live at its original home of sunskymysteries.com and you can see you can listen to the podcast and you can read the show notes that we have on the show like you see right here you can read the show notes and access all of the different stories through links so that you can see what the heck I'm mumbling about so we're pretty excited. We've got, uh, we're uh, in our new studios and everything, and uh, everything is all set. So what do you say? We get started with the next surprise right here on Surrounded by Idiots. <laughs> That's right, we now have our very own high-class, high-quality opening. Let me give you a little bit of background on that opening that we use. That, um, the first part, with uh, all the way up to our uh, Ambrose Butterbutt video, is uh, actually part of the opening for our flagship show, um, This Old Shack in which I discuss alternative energy and detail all of the things that we go through up at our place in northern Michigan to keep it off the grid. And all of the video that you see in that uh, those openings, we took those. Those were done in-house. The only thing that we didn't do were the pictures from NASA, the Coast Guard helicopter, and the firemen, things like that. Everything else is all completely original. We also have the uh, new theme music, which is... Um, from a website called Gematico, Gematico.com, and it's one of the artists on there. It is um, uh, a um, um, royalty-free piece of music that uh, you can download and use for uh, various purposes, and we are getting together as soon as I remember to actually write it down, the artist name and the link so that you can go there and purchase the music or download the music. Like I said, it's all free. It's all done under the Creative Commons license. Now, 
ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, basically a test show. So I'm only going to hit one story tonight. And uh, because we're checking the uh, camera and everything, I'm uh, looking at myself right now. And uh, it appears that everything is working correctly, much to my surprise. We're almost ready to start doing this live streaming again. Uh, the live stream, by the way, also has the chat back on it so that you can communicate with me and call me names while I'm on the air. One of the greatest risks in the history of mankind, the entire recorded history of mankind, plus the unrecorded type that they don't want us to know about, is that the manufacturing of a crisis per week by the current version of government that we have they seem to have saddled ourselves with can and will result in a runaway situation that may in fact crash the crap out of the entire world because believe it or not they think they've got all of this under control they can spin and manufacture the crises and bubbles and everything and because they have the media as lapdogs then they figure that the media can give out a, a story and suspend any type of uh, really horrific, uh, any type of horrific happenings that are ha that uh, happen to occur. Unfortunately, they don't realize that people are sick and tired and fed up with the crap that they watch on their so-called news. The simple fact is that people's lives, people's children. Their parents, their friends, their neighbors, their futures are being played with like a toy by these people. These are the same clowns that claim to have the people's interests at heart. Aside from two legs, eyes, and arms, these idiots aren't even human. They fall into the same bucket as every other despot that's ever lived. Now, think about after all of this crashes and burns... And we go through the horror that is obviously coming our way. Think about what the survivors will do with the people they consider to be at fault for the deaths of millions of people because of one of their manufactured crises. Here's an article, a quote from an article from the Christian Science Monitor, just to tell you how this can get totally out of control pretty darn quick. Here, let's take a look at this right here. Let me pull this up on the screen there. And, uh, boy, that sure does look good, doesn't it? I'm really uh, happy with, uh, I'm really happy with uh, the way the uh, show is uh, recording, streaming, and displaying. Now, that's pretty good. I really like that. At any rate, this comes from the Christian Science Monitor. I believe it is right here. Christian Science Monitor. Why is Walmart worried? Payroll tax could cut consumer spending. Retailers are preparing for a triple whammy as the restoration of the payroll tax, surging gas prices, and stagnant employment and wages take a bite out of consumers' disposable income, leaving them with less cash to spend on clothing, groceries, and eating out. Now you think about that. Whether or not you like them or not, whether or not you shop there, the largest corporation on the planet, with all the power they have, with all the people on this planet that rely on them for their livelihood, is by all reports in a pickle over the manufactured crisis that the idiots in Washington keep coming up with. Remember, this is very important. One thing that we have to remember, absolutely and completely, the housing bubble that originally caused all of this mayhem, this was a manufactured bubble. It's hard to pin down exactly why they did this to us. On purpose or not, if on purpose, there is a very, very special level of hell waiting for these people. Continuing with the article, as a result, more than three years after the recession officially ended, yeah, American consumers might be preparing to town shift again, if only slightly, with low-income consumers hit the hardest. Go figure. Sensing consumer trepidation, retailers are scrambling to adjust, and there are links. So, Walmart, this one is from, uh, this particular one, the, this one here is from uh, Christian Science Monitor, and this one is from ZeroHedge.com. Walmart says families are reduced are adjusting to a reduced 
paycheck and increased gas prices. So that's uh, exactly um, two two sources for this. Uh, here's the key section. Let me see here. Blah da blah. The blah da blah da blah da blah. Okay, this is apparently a statement from Walmart. We are confident that our low prices will continue to resonate resonate and families adjust to reduced paychecks and increased gas my, gas prices. However, February sales started slower than planned. Now, I'm sure you've uh, already heard this if you uh, listen to any type of conservative media at all, that Walmart's sales for February are D-E-A-D -E dead. At our local store, see, we live um, in the uh, Saline Ann Arbor Metroplex area. I made that up myself, the Saline Ann Arbor Metroplex. It's actually just Saline Ann Arbor. At any rate, um, we have the University of Michigan. We have St. Joe's Hospital. We have a uh, University of Michigan Hospital. The uh, entire university, we have a very, very deep manufacturing base. Um, we've got the airport, uh, we have all the malls and stores, and we've got a, an anchor Walmart in the area as well as the Meyer Thrifty Acres and everything else. So we don't really see that much of a um, hardship that a lot of the other areas of the country uh, might be seeing in this area, Ann Arbor and uh, Saline and parts of Ypsilanti. They're um, kind of a um, immune to this uh, recession stuff. It's got to get a lot worse before it really hits us. I mean, it hits a lot of the businesses and with the effect of slowing down, not as many orders, not as much to do. You work, take some furlough days. That's what we're doing where I work during the day because, well, that's the way it, uh, the way it goes. Now, anyways, back to the story. You remember on uh, some of our previous shows, I've uh, talked about I have uh, talked about how the technology grows, the productivity grows, but the wages stay the same. How people only want to get ahead, but somehow, some way, the bubbles burst and voila, everything you worked for is gone. Hundreds of thousands, millions of people have lost homes. People are being not even counted as unemployed anymore. They're just vanished according to the government, all just to make the ruling puppet look better. Now, I've told you guys about this before, and let me see if I got it here. No, I don't have it handy. Anyways, there is a, um, a book. It was uh, published in the 1990s. It is called uh, Giant's Star, and I'd like to beat this book to death because, well, it's, it was written by a, uh, looks like a fairly astute gentleman there. One of the lead characters laments about how, how, no matter how much technology grows, the basic normal person's wages grows just enough to keep the lifestyle the same or just a little worse. If you work for a living, whether it be in manufacturing, in retail, um, whatever business it is, you will find over the years, and I've been working for over 30 years now, so I see this on a daily basis, you'll find that your wages increase just enough to keep up with inflation. You never really get ahead. Um, it's the way it is. Why? In the same book, the author writes about a uh, character, and uh, the character thinks to himself that um, um, all these people had ever, and this is just people that he sees on the street, all these people had ever wanted was to live their lives, pay their way, and be left alone. How had the few with different aspirations always been able to command the power to impose themselves and their systems? That was all they ever wanted, he thought to himself, as he looked around and took in the sights and sounds around him. And now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I actually have proof about what I am talking about right here. This comes from the Economic Policy Institute, the wedges between productivity and median compensation grow. Let's take a look at this article right here. 
and I have some nifty graphics to go with it. Income, and you can, this is by uh, Lawrence Michel, M-I-S-H-E-L. This was actually published in April of 2012, but it's a blast from the past, and it uh, speaks to what I have been talking about. And this is at um, epi.org, epi.org. Income inequality has grown over the last 30 years or more driven by three, three dynamics. Rising inequality of labor income, wages and compensation, rising inequality of capital income, and an increasing share of income going to capital income rather than labor income. Let's get on to the pretty, pretty graphics. Here is the first one. This is entitled Growth in Real Hourly Compensation for Production, Non-Supervisory Workers, and Productivity from 1948 to 2011. Now you can see right here, this is about where it starts to break off, right around 1970. Now you can see this is your productivity, this is your hourly compensation. Going from 1948, right down here, to 2010, right here, and it hasn't changed one bit. You can see right here the lines for productivity and the lines for compensation stay the same right about until 1970. And at that point, the hourly compensation started to level off and become stagnant, yet productivity kept rising. Productivity since 1948 has risen. 254%. Hourly compensation since 1948 has risen 113%. That is quite a bit of disparity. Now let's take a look at this other chart that may be a little bit easier to understand. We have here 73 to 79, we have uh, 79 to 95, 95 to 2000, 2000 to 2011, 1973 to 2011. This is uh, basic trends annual growth. You see right here we have median hourly wage, hourly compensation, average hourly compensation and productivity. And this shows you uh, in percentages exactly how much it's grown right here. And you can see it is relatively flat. Maybe um, a uh, 1.46%, 1.21%. That's over a period of five years there, um, six years there, 11 years there. From 2000 to 2011, that 11 year period, 1.53% is all the median hourly compensation rose. And I believe that I know why. And this is something that I understand because, well, I'm trying to run my uh, little uh, my little network here and uh, keep my head above water doing uh, this uh, little show and everything else that we do. What I can tell you, absolutely and positively, is that many businesses, probably most businesses, most businesses are, in fact, right now, they're profit margin is about let's see here the profit margin is about that much very thin profit margins are not very big at all and yet every year every single year the cost of supplying health care and i believe that mo i still believe that most companies do this for their employees the cost of providing health care has gone up and up and up and up and 
only a nitwit would not realize, or an idiot, as the case may be, would not realize that part of your hourly compensation is also your benefits. And as the health care costs go up, your wages cannot, because your employer is taking that tissue-thin profit margin that I showed you just a minute ago and attempting to keep their head above water as well as making a profit, paying themselves, paying your wages, paying the uh, taxes, the uh, unemployment insurance, um, and health care, and retirements, and everything else. And most employers just can't afford to give you another dollar an hour every year. It just ain't going to happen. And with Obamacare coming through, as this stuff keeps rising, this health care costs keep rising and rising and rising. Don't plan on making any more money. And we all are all sure as sure better hope that this economy doesn't go to hell in a handbasket again. Because otherwise there's gonna be real trouble. And that's my take on that particular situation. Um and let me look through here, see if there's anything else that I want to say. No. I've got one that I'm going to hit on the next show, and it's called the GOP 2.0, and that is actually going to be a real, um, real barn burner of a show once I start start talking about that stuff. Now, over at USSA Michigan, where we uh, put the podcasts and the uh, show notes for this particular show, because I'm doing this part tonight. And then I'm going to do the second half probably uh, in the next day or so. So you're going to go from S3, E4 to E4A. That's because it's going to be a two-part episode. There you go. So, that's about it for tonight. And remember, remember, as my good, good friend, and our very first guest on the show, we should have him back on at some point, as a matter of fact, as our good friend, Cliff High of the WebBot Reports, always tells me, make sure that you stay a little bit hungry all the time, because you never know when you're going to run into a pie. And, there you go, that's about it. And hopefully, everybody enjoyed the show, and uh, we're going to be done uh, testing and going live stream again. And uh, that's about it for tonight. So thank you for uh, showing up, and I believe we'll go ahead and end the show with our credits once again. On account of I like them so much. Remember, we took all this, uh, all the video and everything that you see in there um, ourselves. This is uh, from all of our stock footage. We did not take any of the photographs, just the video. And incidentally, keep in mind that when you get to, when, when you get to the part, when you see the part about the um, um, natural disasters, featuring natural disasters, that lightning bolt, that lightning bolt actually hit the boat dock that I was standing on. You can see it coming right down through there. I'm going to see if I can remember to detail that a little bit more on the next show. In the meantime, my name is Bill Zam. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again the next time, and enjoy the credits one more time.